guys, it's Trivia Games or Adam, and with all the new changes here in Season 5, the new locations, the vehicles, the rift, weapons are different, new weapons, it's really easy to make a lot of mistakes here in Season 5, especially if you are a new player. So today, I'll be going over 7 mistakes noobs are making here in Season 5. Now, for those of you that don't know, I'm doing a massive giveaway over the month of July and a little bit into August. I'll be giving away a total of 30,000 V-Bucks, and to enter, it is so easy. All you have to do is drop a like on today's video, subscribe to the channel, and let me guys know right now in the comment section below what platform do you play Fortnite on. I'll be announcing all the winners on the 10th of August. So kicking things off, here in the number 7 spot, we all have our go-to spots on the map, right? We have those spots we love to land every single match, and that's totally fine, but landing at these spots every single time can actually end up hurting you. One thing you really want to do, especially now here in Season 5 with all of the new additions to the map, and I'm sure we'll get a ton more, landing and checking out all these new spots is so important. So one massive benefit when it comes to landing in new locations every single game, and again, this goes for spots you're not used to going that have been here before, or spots that are branded Fortnite, simply landing in new spots and getting used to these new spots will help you so much because you never know where that end game will be, right? You might end up at Junk Junction, you might end up in the new section of the map, you might end up in Retail Row, you know, you never know where you'll need to be, and being familiar with all the spots on the map, you know, how could that hurt you, right? That's something that could benefit you so, so much, and heck, simply putting yourself in different situations will make you an overall better player. The next thing that is definitely worth doing if you aren't doing this already here in Fortnite is simply by looking at all of the patch notes for the game. This sounds like such a little thing and something you probably don't have to do, but when they make changes to a lot of things with every single patch, it's always worth knowing what these changes are, right? There's changes to weapons that you normally would notice. There's like fall off damage changes. For example, you know, a couple weeks ago or a month ago, the Sounds SMG was absolutely trash here in Fortnite. Heck, it was trash from the beginning when it was first added to the game, and all of a sudden now, the Sound SMG is one of the most powerful guns of the game. Why? Because within one patch, it goes from being horrible to borderline overpowered. There's always that time we have a favorite gun that we love using, and all of a sudden, it catches a massive nerf. And if we're not following all these patch notes, we have no idea what's going on with the weapons we're using, or on the other side of that, there might be guns that we don't use much, and those guns receive a massive buff, and all of a sudden, those guns are amazing. Again, going back to that Sounds SMG, so knowing these things when they happen right away will definitely give you an edge. Speaking of following patch notes, at the number 5 spot we have farming materials, and material farming is something that we've always been doing in Fortnite, but not too long ago, Epic Games actually nerfed the amount of mats you get from chests, and of course mats that just spawn in on the ground or in buildings, so when you're looting at the start of the match, you're not going to have as many mats as you normally would, and going out of your way to farm mats is something you really have to do, especially now in Fortnite. Personally, I find going from area to area farming mats or finding these trees and farming mats that way it's kind of annoying, kind of tedious, and I kind of feel like it takes me out of the game, and I really don't like doing that. So, one awesome thing for you guys who want to have a bunch of mats at the start of a match, simply go into a house or a building, have your pickaxe out, and break down all the furniture you see. Now, this doesn't sound really all that efficient, and you wouldn't think you would get a ton of mats from this, but this is something that is so incredibly easy and it gets you so many mats so when you're looting at the start of a match you normally would if you go through like three or you know four houses you'll find that you end up having like four 500 wood from breaking down furniture and that right there is enough or a ton for the start of a match because after that You'll get kills, you'll get mats from other players, but for the start of a match, doing that is way better than going out of your way to farm trees and rocks and things like that. So in the number four spot, one new feature that a lot of you may not be using are the rifts. And the rifts 
are a great way to kind of fast travel around the map, and this is something that we've never really had in Fortnite. If you landed at a corner of the map, like Junk Junction, for example, if you land there and the circle is on the opposite corner of the map, then you're out of luck, right? You have to either have a jump pad or just run all the way across the map, which can be really annoying. But now that we have all these rifts, on the map, it makes getting around the map a lot easier, and it allows you to actually land in these different corners of the map without getting penalized for that. Now, these rifts still aren't going to solve your problem of landing in these remote areas just because, for example, if somebody else uses one rift, you can't use that same rift over and over again. It will disappear. And then on top of that, some of these rifts just land or spawn in really awkward spots. And it's kind of tough to get to these spots. But for the most part, if you know these are there and you use them properly, they can really benefit you. And especially if you like landing in those remote areas, you have to know about these things. Coming in at the three spot, one really important thing when coming into this season of Fortnite, one thing you have to understand is what guns are good and what guns are bad because so much has changed over the last couple of months and prior to all these changes it was kind of always the same guns it was the ARs are good the snipers are good RPGs are good and shotguns are good right besides that you know nothing else in this game was really all that good but now that's different because one massive change is how incredibly powerful SMGs are now here in Fortnite. For the longest time, SMGs were kind of a joke in Fortnite. Ever since really the start of the game, SMGs were kind of like those last resort weapons, or if there's nothing else around, I guess I'll use an SMG. But now that's different. SMGs, both the TAC SMG and the Sounds SMG, are really good. And if you aren't using these guns, you're making a really big mistake. Both the TAC SMG and the Sounds SMG received nerfs at different times. So, three, four months ago, the TAC SMG received a massive buff, which made it so deadly at close range. And even at medium range, the thing could snipe. And of course, not too long ago, the Sounds SMG received a buff. And the buff was actually so massive that it actually made the Sounds SMG borderline overpowered and people were actually using the sound system G as an AR but of course since it was too OP it recently got nerfed again but now both the sounds SMG and the TAC SMG are good when you expect them to be good, right? They are amazing at close range, they are decent at medium range, but SMGs are more close range guns. So do not pass up on the SMGs here in Season 5 because they are incredibly powerful. So just as I'm about to post this video, they add in the new SMG into Fortnite. So they actually removed or vaulted the TAC SMG, and now we just have the standard SMG. And this thing is even better than the TAC SMG. SMG. So now you have two incredibly strong SMGs here in Fortnite. So it's definitely worth trying these out and seeing if these guns are right for you. So coming in at the number two spot, shotguns used to be good here in Fortnite. Remember when shotguns were like so overpowered? If you were using shotguns, you were pretty much screwed. Yeah, a lot has changed here in Fortnite. Here in season five, shotguns, especially the pump shotgun, just isn't good. It just isn't as good as it used to be. And it is so incredibly inconsistent when before, you know, the pump shotgun could be so deadly. And now that they got rid of the double pump or really just using any shotguns back to back, shotguns took a massive hit over the last couple of months and they really aren't what they used to be. On top of that, you've had a bunch of guns that were kind of recently added to Fortnite that are surprisingly really good now. So now you have a bunch of weapons competing for your shotgun slot. So the pump shotgun, let's be honest guys, right now it is really bad. The tack shotgun and the heavy shotgun are definitely better than the pump, but then you have guns like the dual pistols, which is so incredibly good if you're accurate and at close range, it can absolutely wreck people. And then you have the drum gun or the Tommy gun that is also incredibly good as well. So before you had the shotguns and they were good and nothing else could really compete with those guns. But now you have the shotguns that 
aren't as good and you have a bunch more guns in this game again going back to the SMGs which are also really good as well it's just they aren't what they used to be and you have way more guns competing for your slots so maybe it's time to drop the pump shotgun and try out some of the other good guns in this game so wrapping up our list here in the number one spot one of the most enjoyable things to see here in fortnite is a noob driving in an atk because one thing a lot of noobs like to do is when they have their ATK and they start getting shot at, they don't care. They just keep on going. They think they'll be fine. And the thing is, the ATK really isn't all that fast and you can't really make sudden movements with this thing. So you can't swerve and, you know, dodge bullets. So your best bet to get away with one of these things or stay alive when using these things is when you get shot at, just get out, get out of these things, hide behind it, build do anything besides keep on driving because you will die. The ATK is a great addition to Fortnite, but this thing just really isn't all that great when getting shot at, right? It's so open, it's so easy to get hit when you're driving one of these things, and if you don't react right away, if you don't get out immediately, you're gonna drop so damn quick when in one of these things, so next time you find yourself in one of these things and you're driving along and you're getting hit, jump out and do anything else besides keep on going forward and crossing your fingers hoping you won't die. So that's gonna wrap up our seven mistakes that noobs make here in season five. And like always guys, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe for more Fortnite content, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.